Shalom Rastafari. Ne Ras Yadinos Tefari. I am Ras Yadinos Tefari, Ras Yadonis, also known as Wendem Yadon. Now, <clears throat> we had briefly, I say, touched on the point of God and the God spell. You know, God spell, go spell, God spell. Go spell the God spell. What is the God spell? What is the real, the true God spell? Now, there is a true when gale or a gossip of L, but what is the true God spell? First, we have to start, begin where we're at. That's where we got to start from. Because there's a lot of moving pieces to our story as the once lost but now found beta is Israel. Now, you know, we've all often um, referred to how to make a slave. Now, that's an important document. We're not going to go into the details of that, but we are going to use it as a reference point again. Now, some some dismiss it, dismiss the reality of um, how to make a slave at their own peril. If they claim that they are trying to do good for black people, reach the youths, uplift the community, you have to deal with the reality of who we are, what we've gone through, and speak the truth. That means put the blame where the blame um, needs to be. There's a, there's a background video. I say a background video, a video that some of y'all may have seen already. We want to do a little commentary on it, but we just want to, as they say, put, put a fork in it, or you know, put a, you know, mark this. Note, um, I think it's like, it was a C. Craig, the Reverend, either the preacher, C. Craig Lewis. He did a series on hip hop, exposing certain elements of the so-called hip hop movement to, um, to the parents, to the youths, and kind of showing. Um, kind of a, a, a spiritual Egypt in his own way or, or from his perspective. He also touched on Rasta or Rastafari, but what was clear, what's clear about the part about Rasta and Rastafari is that he doesn't really have good Bible history, really. You know, even on the hip-hop part, although he knows something is wrong, he hasn't gone to the real root. And it's because a lot of these so-called pastors and preachers, although they mean well, they don't want to, for example, in the in the case where they had a so-called Jesus figure in the Wu-Tang video, and, and there was a flying star that cut off the head of this, um, for lack of a better word, image, this idol that pretends to be Jesus. People say, oh, that's Jesus. And he said, they cut off the head of Jesus. They cut off the head of Jesus. I mean, that wasn't Jesus to me. That wasn't the, the Christ of the Bible to me. I mean, in fact, when you look at um, who is who is Christ, and you look at the different images of Christ, which one of these? Any kind of white man, basically, you know, along the sides, right there. But now when we speak about the king of kings, when we speak about Kedemawi Haile Selassie, everybody gets offended, but there's more reality to the king of kings, truth and reality to Haile Selassie the first, and to all these so-called images of a Jesus. But anyway, in that video... Um, C. Craig Lewis, you know, he shows the Wu-Tang Clan video, and he says, oh, they cut off the head of Jesus. And he said, because they, they think that Jesus is the white man's God. No, no, no. The, the real point is that Christ, Jesus, or Yeshua, Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus, is black. Christ is black. And true original Christianity like Judaism, is, is, is black or Afro-Shemitic. You understand? The people in the Bible wore Afros and what we would call dreadlocks or locks. It's, it's very clear. You understand? However, you have a lot of the preachers that every time we speak about so-called the whitewashed Jesus, the Antichrist, the, the, the image of the beast, they get offended because they don't want to go to the root. So we've been thinking about this and saying, you know what? It's almost like that saying, lost in translation. You know what I mean? Lost in mistranslation. Um, the Western Gentile misinterpretation of Christianity. Because they don't want to go further than how to make a slave. In other words, for a lot of black folks, history or black history begins after 
Negroes or niggers or lost sheep came to the shores of America and the Caribbean. So whenever they talk about black history, they go almost maybe as far back as then and then just kind of point across the seas and Africa, but don't really go deep. You understand? They talk about the black people, the, the blacks in the Bible. The Bible is black. The Bible is a black book. Original Christianity is, is, is a black reality. This does not excuse us, you understand, as, as so-called sinners. You understand, or born in the world of hatiyat, or born in the world of sin, you see. But we have to just touch on that for a moment, you know. Um, we thought it was necessary to kind of refer to that just momentarily because some of that background is necessary, you know. You have to know where you've, you know, your history. You have to know the history of other peoples to really understand why they think the way they think, why they act the way they act, and why what is what. We have to know the background of it. So we was touching on the gospel and ghost spell. And we still have, um, here we go right here. This is the page we're looking for. There's a section on um, controlled language. And this is in this brief document called uh, Let's Make a Slave, just to remind you of it. Let's Make a Slave, the so-called Wooly Lynch Papers, right? All right, now, this next to, at least in this copy we have, it's like the next to last page, but we think it's one of the most important, one of the most important parts of this document. And before we go further with the so-called gospel and the God spell and how our people have been put under a spell combined with witchcraft and sorcery, you know, that's the so-called um, the drugs, you know, the pharmaceuticals pharmacesis, pharmaceuticals, just like the word pharmacy. Yes, people may get a little offended, but you have to think about that. If the scriptures, the Bible talks about sorcery or witchcraft, and we look at the words, and the words are the same as pharmaceuticals, and then we see all this madness happening with so-called RX pharmaceutical drugs, and this fallacious war against the kind of balsam, Cannabis, which is mentioned in the Bible in, connected, in connection with God's holy herb or God's holy, in, in connection with the true God's holy place, we have Kanabosa. And um, let's just begin off right there for a moment, you know, let there be light, you know. All right, so Baruch, Baruch Ata Adonai. Mm. So here we're going to touch on briefly, you know, see, in the scripture it says that our prayers go up as the Aishans, as the incense, as we mentioned in the last Torah portion reading and see them, there's two types of incense, there's, there's frankincense and there's, and there's incense, and it doesn't really describe what the frankincense, so there's a lot of confusion when we look at it today, we say, oh, that's frankincense, oh, frankincense is incense, when we study Torah, when we study the law, to the law and to the testimony. If they don't speak according to this word, what does it mean? There's no illumination in them. There's no light in them. And let's just reference and document that. And we're going to begin off from, from this point. Let's go to Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. Because we're the once lost but now found Beta Israel. Like it or, or, or lump it or deny it, accept it or deny it. The truth must be told. The truth must be known. And you all, each of us, must decide for or against the truth. So the truth must be proclaimed. The truth must be proclaimed. And this is what we and others who are proclaiming the truth of the King of Kings and his Christ in these last days and times of the Gentile white world supremacy must be about. So Isaiah chapter 8, verse uh, 20. It says, To the law and to the testimony, to the law. And law, scripturally speaking, is Torah. You know what I'm And the Torah is the first five books of our black lawgiver. Lawgiver. And the, he was a redeemer for us. It was through Moses that our people came out of old-time Egypt. And our people, black peoples. The Egyptians, black peoples. But there's 
black on black crime, black on black violence, and just because you're my color, you're not my kind. You have to understand. You may be our color, but you're not our kind. We're speaking about black righteousness or righteousness in the black or of the black. Let's make that distinction. A lot of people are confused in this black and white, free, Masonic, Gentile world conspiracy. They're confused in the black and the white. So everything white is, is either good or everything white is bad, everything black is good, everything black is bad. That's the confusion. That's the programming right there. You see, that's a, that's a, we call the checkerboard, the checkerboard programming of white supremacy. That stops you from seeing the real, the real spectra of colors. You understand the real so-called rainbow, and the rainbow was the covenant of Jah. You understand Jah's sign was the rainbow, and when we touch on this symbol, let, let's get the larger flag up here. You see, this flag is very significant. It's the banner of salvation. This flag right here. You understand this flag. You understand this flag is the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And this is why they fought against this. This is why they removed this. You understand? But they can't remove the truth from its place, no matter how much they try to. You see, the truth will always, will always rise again. Because the truth is the only thing that is eternal. You see, the lies will be exposed. The lies will be revealed. The lies will be known. And those who have sold their souls to the lies and the liars, you know what I'm saying, will be wiped out of creation, kill, cramp, and paralyze every weak heart conception, wipe them out of creation. This is where we're, this is the cusp, this is the crossroads that we're at right now as we approach this so-called 2012, really, as we approach 2013. We should be speaking about 2013. We already know that 2012 is said to be a time of change, but it's really the day of Jehovah. It's the day of Jah, Yahweh. It's the day of Yahweh. You know, saying the day of Yahweh is a particular year, and when we look at it, we can see that we're coming up to this this particular time of of decision, like a like a valley of decision, the valley of Jehoshaphat. But the word says to us right here in Isaiah. Let's go forward with this Isaiah chapter eight. Verse 20 says, to the law and to the testimony. Very interesting. If we, if we look in the New Testament, we'll find that this is the patience of the saints. Those who keep the commandment of Jah and the testimony of Joshua, the Moshiach, or of Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior. So, Old Testament, here Isaiah New Testament revelation speaks the same word to the law, to Torah, and to the testimony of the Moshiach. And it says, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, if they don't speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There's no illumination in them. They call themselves the Illuminati. They call themselves the Illuminated Ones. They say they are, are dealing with light. But if they don't speak according to this word, there's no light in them. If they don't speak according to the law and the testimony and the true word. Now, the word, I want you just to make a note of it. We're going to still go through this. We touched on Gomar previously. You understand? Or the acronym of God, G-O-D. Now, of course, in dyslexia, it's D-O-G, dog. You understand? And we'll touch on the spiritual Egyptian connection, even with Anpu, Anubis, and the, the so-called um, symbolism, Yovas, that those who are in the so-called occult utilize and use based on the dog. You understand? Even in Madonna's recent um, Super Bowl Super Bowl video. There's a lot of videos out there that explore and break down certain connections of the signs and the symbolism, the programming that's used right there. And we have to ask ourselves, if this programming is so ancient, why is it still effective with the people? People say, well, that's the past. That's ancient Egypt. That's thousands of years ago. We're past all that. That's the don't. 
but it still has an effect because there's something in our psyche. There's something in our, our DNA. There's a consciousness in our DNA that when they utilize these symbols, whether it's the wings of Heru, whether it's the orb, whether it's the star, whether it's the dog symbol, Cyrus, or this or that, there's some effect with people. Even though many of the people who, who gravitate to this when the symbols and signs are used don't really understand the real deepness of it. It still has an effect on them. It's like it's an unspoken, inexplicable connection. That's because as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. But because of miseducation, because of lack of, of, of knowledge, they do not, and discipline. See, knowledge needs discipline. You understand? Know and knowledge also needs wisdom. You understand? Know and wisdom also needs understanding. This is where the books of Proverbs speak to us. So at a basic foundation, read Proverbs. You understand? Know read the book and study the book of Proverbs. And, 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 and read and chant the book of Psalms. These are, these are the basics. You know, you know, these, these are the basics of the disciples. These are the basic um, daily, like the daily bread. But Torah and studying the, the five books of Moses is crucial to us as once lost but now found. Because first comes the Torah, and then when we get to the testimony of our black Lord and Savior, it becomes very much clear. But without that, what we have is the counterfeit so-called Jehovah worships, the so-called churches, black churches especially, that do not teach the half of the story because they're part of the programming of the system. They're part of the programming of the Gentiles. They're part of the conspiracy. And what's very beautiful about all of this is that it's all here in our Bibles. You know, because there's a lot of stuff in this Bible, but notice how little your preacher or pastor touches on. There's a lot of stuff in this Word. They make it seem like, well, some is too complex. It's not really because they're not teaching the truth. They're not telling you the truth. So each of, each of us has the, the responsibility, you know, saying the responsibility to learn the truth for ourselves. Now, we wanted to bring up that word right there from Isaiah 8 and, 8 and 20. Now, why is that important? Well, that's important as it connects as it connects with uh, uh, Second Second Corinthians one and um, let's go let, let's put this right here Second Corinthians one and uh, one and twelve Second Corinthians one and twelve Now we know that a spell has to do with witchcraft or sorcery So there's a god spell, but I want you to know that this God is not the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. It's not the true God. Now, what does the scripture says, say at 2 Corinthians 1 and 12? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 1 and 12 for a moment. Now, some of y'all are familiar with these scriptures right here, and even if we're familiar with them, we have to refer to them and, and be reminded in the teachings, because it really connects, you know, it connects the fullness of the picture. Now, Second Corinthians 1 and 12, let's go right here. Second Corinthians 1 and, and, and 12, right? 1 and 12, right? It says, uh, Second Corinthians 1 and 12, actually, let's see, Second Corinthians, my bad. Four and four. My bad, right here. Four and four. This verse is, is important. Let's just touch on this right here since we brought it up. For our rejoicing is this. The testimony of our conscience. Our rejoicing is this. The testimony. The testifying of our conscience. That in simplicity and godly sincerity and not with fleshy wisdom. We don't want to preach fleshy or worldly wisdom, something that's what it's about, but not, it's not with fleshy wisdom, but by the grace of Jah, by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly and more abundantly to you word, all right? Now to the, to, to the quote that we had intended, but perhaps that was the will of, of, 
our Father that we touched on that verse right there, four and four. Okay, four and four. This this is the verse. Now this verse is so significant because even when we read out read it ourselves years ago, it was it was it was amazing to, to read this in the Bible. And verse let's just get into it. It says it says in whom, right? It says because speaking of the gospel at the same time, so it says because not it's not self, it's not self, but it's Christos Jesus as Lord. It is it is the Moshia Joshua who is the Adonai who is the Lord. That that is the one who is preached. You see, a lot of folks figure, oh, I grew up in the church. You understand? And so I know what the church is about. Listen, I grew up in church too. You understand? And it took me, you understand, time going into the Bible myself, apart from that, in the light of Rastafari, to really find out all that wasn't taught to us when we were in church. You understand? I mean, there's so much in this Bible. You understand? There's so much in, this, in, the, in the true life of the true Christ that's not taught to us. And that hasn't, because I hear a lot of folks saying, oh, I, I grew up in the church, you know, like a lot of these so-called artists, like, I keep seeing this picture over here, I was going to lecture on, on this dude, it seems like he's more and more in the news, remember this dude right here, right, so-called Kanye West, people say, oh, he's looking like Christ, remember when Christ was crucified, right, according to the Bible, according to the scriptures, there were two thieves, remember, there were two thieves, on his right and his left, and one was a, a repentant thief. And then there was the other one who was an unrepentant thief. Re, do you recall that? Well, I'm, I want you to think about this for a moment. Which one do you think he is? You think he's the repentant thief, or you think he's the unrepentant thief? Who else um, displayed or demonstrated themselves in a, as, as crucified? It was Tupac, right? Tupac Shakur. Now, Tupac Shakur based on his own testimony, you understand, it was, was repentant about much that he had done. You understand? And in his last, you know, days and his last interviews, he really tried to set the record straight or testify, you understand, testify to who he was, what he was involved in, where he was at, what he's experienced, and also the scheme. You understand? He was exposing much and some say this is why, since he was down with that, and he was exposing that, this is why many say that he was targeted by the so-called Illuminati or the, or the Freemason. I say it's by the Satanists, plain and simple. Let's make it simple. He was targeted by the Satanists, whether they call themselves the so-called Illuminati, whether they call themselves Freemasons, whether they call themselves Black Boule, or whatever the other particular names, the particulars doesn't really matter. We know them spiritually. You understand? And spiritually, they've already been targeted. And these are the so-called Satanists targeted to him. And many of them, as we already know, in blackface. So this gives us another clear example that ones may be our color, you know, being black, but not our kind. Because we're still dealing with fleshy. Maybe that's why we went to the verse, we put up verse 1 and 12 of Second Corinthians. Because it's not in fleshy wisdom. You understand, but in the grace of Jah, and you can see that grace of Jah, that grace of God, in and on Tupac in his latter days, and he, he, you know, as he began to recognize that his days were, were numbered, but he had still an opportunity because of popularity and, and presence to speak, and he has spoken, and much of it is coming out, much of it has come out, and now we can reflect on a lot of these things and say, wow, Tupac, Tupac was trying to warn us. So we had those two thieves. So I look at those two thieves as, as, as an example. A parable is on one hand Tupac. And on the other hand, we have someone like Kanye West. But see, one of them was repentant. And, and one of them even mocked our black Lord on the cross. He mocked Yeshua, Joshua on the cross. Well, if you could save, you know, watch you 
take yourself down off the cross, it's such and such and such. And this is the attitude that I don't know if you see it, but we see it in ones like um, Kanye, Kanye West, so forth and so on. So this is more examples of this spiritual Egypt. But we're not quite done just yet. But let's lay down this foundation here. So it says, but if our gospel, you know what I'm saying? If our gospel, and we're speaking about the gospel of the King of Kings and his Christ, the gospel of Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, and his Christ, at the good news of Jairus the Farai, the true good news, the true fullness of the gospel, the, the, the good news, the Wengel, you know saying, of our black Lord and Savior. If, that's, if that be hid, you know what I'm saying? If that be hid, in other words, if one's just don't get it, you know, if it be hid, you might be watching this and saying, oh, I, just, I hear you saying, I just don't get it. But if our gospel, the true gospel, you know what I'm saying, be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You know what I'm saying? To those who are lost. And we say well, this message is to, to, in hopes and prayers of reaching the lost sheep. You know what I'm saying? Of reaching the lost sheep of Beta Israel, so called black Israel, that's in a state of apostasy. That's, that's in a great state of, I mean, some try to describe what's going on now. And they say it's just insanity. When I mean, you really see what's going on, and that's just in the media, but, but, but in the streets, you know what I'm saying? When you see what's going on globally, it's just insanity, my brothers and sisters. But if our gospel, if the gospel, right? If the gospel, the good news of Haile Selassie the first, you know what I'm saying? If the gospel of the eternal gospel, the glorious gospel, if it be hid, you know what I'm saying? It's hid to them that are lost. Verse 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which it says believe not, but we're not lost in translation like many are lost in translation by the controlled language. You understand? Know but we've broken that, broken that seal, so to speak. So we're able now to look at the word in its true context. And we know that the word believe, you know what I'm saying, is a lie covering up the amen or mamen. When we look in our Afro-Shemitic and Hebraic language, it's mamen. You know understand? And at the root, subjectively, is the amen. And we have Christ, our black Lord and Savior, even in this book, identifying himself with the Amen, the beginning of the creation of God. So when we look at so-called religion, faith, spirituality, and look at this word Amen, we can trace this word Amen all the way back to ancient Egypt and Ethiopia, and Ethiopia is at the very root of the scripture. So we see a cipher. So when we look at this in overstanding, Gomer, you know what I'm saying? means completion. It means completion, a perfect cipher. So we have to go through these experiences individually and collectively in order to cipher and over to overstand. You know, went to about 360. 360 is a circle. It's a cipher. You know what I'm saying? You have to cipher it in order to overstand it. You begin with degrees, and those degrees are the knowledge, and you get the wisdom to see how it goes together. You know what I'm saying? And how it works and how it operates. But then when you come to an overstanding, you cipher it, you complete it. Right? So we have Amen, those which Amen not. Now, what does Amen mean? What's the true word for belief? Those who don't have right faith, right admittance, correct admittance. Those who don't admit, you know what I'm saying? Admit as true. You see, what they admit as true and what they admit on as being real is unreal. But that which is real, they don't admit. So they have belief, so-called, or ma-men, amen, but it's false because they admit truth is false things and deny the truth of the king of kings and his Christ. But there's more. So it says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds. Notice, it didn't say blind the eyes, but it said blinded the mind. This is deep. That their minds are blind. So, so seeing, they see. But their mind doesn't really pick up. You know what I'm saying? The mind doesn't really comprehend. It doesn't really, say, it doesn't register. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't register because it says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which don't admit as truth, the truth. They admit as truth lies, but they don't admit as truth, the truth. It says, come to the acknowledgement of the truth. See, if you come to the acknowledgement of the truth, it's not based on your feelings. 
It's not based on your emotions, whether you like it. It's based on whether it's true or not. See, too many people, they choose things or they accept things based on how they feel about it. So they make their feelings, their silly souls, you understand? They make their silly souls a god. So if it makes them feel good, like music, for example, without really recognizing what is being communicated, but they're going on feelings, they're going on emotions. You know, the feelings and the emotions and the thoughts, all of that is connected with the soul. So we talk about one selling their souls or one's losing their souls. You understand? They are feelings orientated, but there is no overstanding. There's no mind. There's a mindlessness. It's just going on how you feel about it. It's almost like when you talk about left brain, right brain. They say black people are mostly what? They say right brain. And right brain deals with what? Feelings and emotion. That's why we can feel music and we can dance and, and we can groove and we, you know, such and such. But that's not really helping us get out of this situation. You understand? That's not helping us really express, you understand, express the truth of God in our lives. While the other, they say, Thinks with a left brain. He's more left brain. You understand? Dealing with analysis and critical thinking. You understand? An organization and structure. But check it out, my people. I've said this before. I'll say it again. The Almighty, our true God and Father, created us with both right and left brain and a, and a, and a pituitary, pineal gland, third eye, all of that. You understand? For a reason. But notice we have left brain and right brain. So, are we supposed to be left-brained or right-brained? That's all part of the black-white of, you know, the checkerboard, the checkerboard of Freemasonry. That's another control device used to control people. You understand programming. Y'all are left-brained. Y'all are right-brained. You understand? And the left brain, I tell the left brain, y'all are better than the right brain. The right brain, y'all are better than the left brain. And people are confused. But I'm able to divide what says divide and rule people but divide and rule them within themselves to think that I can only be right-brained because I'm black. Forget about the left brain. I ain't going to read no books. You understand? I'm just going to party, play, have a good time. I don't worry about all that because I'm right-brained. See, don't you get to recognize how that's more part of blinding? See, the mind has to be able to see both the left and the right as one. It has to go through that so-called Hellenian dialectics. You understand? thesis, antithesis, and come to a synthesis, you understand, of knowledge. You understand, in our minds, this is how God created us. You understand, this is how the Almighty created us. He didn't create Adam just as a left brain or a right brain, because otherwise, so we have half of our brain for nothing. They say people only use 10% of their brains. It's interesting. It's very interesting, people using only 10% of their brains. When you really think about it, and I mean really think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Maybe it's not even 10%. Maybe it's less than 10% of their brains. So, of course, they don't understand how the pyramids was built or La Labella or spiritual, you understand, spiritual dimensions or real spirituality. No wonder people are living in the image of animals, you know, in the, limit, in the image of man-made machines or worshiping the things that their own hands have created. It all starts to make a perfect sense of overstanding and it's according to the word. You understand? They're speaking according to the word, the logos. Speaking according to the God logic, the logos. Because in the beginning, that's what that's what it is, and that's what will be even after the end of this seclorum. But it says, "In whom the God of this world." So there's a God of this world. Corinthians four and four. It teaches us there's a God of this world, and the God of this world has blinded the mind of them which don't admit as truth or mom men not, or in your Bible says believe, but we get past, we get past the Gentile mistranslations, and we go to the very root right there, and you can check out the Schofield um, Bible, or the Strong Concordance, and study the, the Greek, get into the Greek, get into the, the Hebraic, you understand, when you get to the higher schools, you understand, you get into the Amharic, and the Ethiopic, and you find that basically the word when you get to the Hebraic, you understand, the, he the Greek and the Hebraic, you recognize that reflects what the King of Kings language says. So people talk about Bible. We don't need no new Bible in that sense, brothers and sisters. We need a true Bible. We need to make up something. Watch that. Once the ones have become so disorientated, 
that now they are making their own gods. And this is what we talk about, the golden calf of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? The golden calf. And we see this, this, this parallel between what the scriptures and the truth really says about where we've been. And when Josh says we will return to that, to a spiritual Egypt. Wow, how amazing to really check it out and recognize we're there. You understand? And we have to come out of this. The redeemed have to come out of this. But here it says, in whom the God of this world. So there's a God of this world. There's a God of this world that blinds the mind, according to the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, who don't admit lest, it says, lest the light, the light, the real illumination, you understand? The light of who? The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, of the Moshiach, who is the what image? who is the image of God, should shine to them. Now, this also connects with the whole COINTELPRO agenda, because when we see, it says, the glorious gospel of Christ, right, the glorious gospel of Christ, Christ is the Greek, the anglicized Greek of the Hebrew Messiah or Moshiach, which basically means Messiah in another way of expression. So COINTELPRO was to stop the rise of a black messiah, to stop the black Christ, to stop Christ, to stop Christ in his kingly character. So it all begins to, we can see, begin to see the big picture as we decipher the basic information. So there's a light, there's an illumination, right, that comes from the glorious gospel of Christ, who is, now Christ is who? The, the Messiah, the black Messiah is who? Is the what? The image. The image of God. It doesn't say he's God, but he is the image. He's the reflection. He's the expression of God. Should do what? Should shine. You see? Should shine. And that shining, now it's using language of um, light, you know, of, of illumination with, with God's word. So who is the true Illuminati? You understand? Know the, the true Illuminati is the black Christ, you understand, who is the image of God and his gospel, his good news, you understand, is intended to illuminate them. But it says, and what does it say right there? It says, in whom the God of this world has done what? Has blinded the minds of them which admit not, or which don't my men, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, even Christ in his kingly character, who is who? Who is the image of God, the image of the true God, should shine to them. So it's very interesting because what it's saying is that there is a God of this world. And so this might better be able to get to the foundation of this particular teaching about the so-called false gospel, you understand, the God spell, you understand, the God spell, go spell God, you know, so we go spell God, G-O-D, but then we learn that so-called Freemasonically, this all has reference points, that the G stands for Gomer, you understand, when we look at so-called Freemasonic, um, Freemasonic teaching, now why is this important? This is important because this is the, 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 the foundation, in a sense, of what the Bible is seeking, what Hawari Apollos is seeking to inform us here of in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, where he's speaking of there is a God of this world. Now, most will say, I've heard preachers preach on this, a, a few preachers preach on this, and the few preachers that have even touched on this, they say, well, you see God right there is in lowercase letters. I like to ask them, where did they get their education? Because, you know, in Hebrew and even, um, you know, in Hebrew and in Greek, as, and the further back we go, there's no such thing as uppercase and lowercase letters. You see, all that was stylization of, of glyphs and characters, but there was no distinction between uppercase and lowercase letters when we look at in biblical times. But this individual says right here, um, you know, these preachers say, well, if you look, and King James has lowercase g-o-d. 
but as a Rastafari say, word, sound, and power. You understand? The word, what's the word? God. What's the sound? God. You understand? And what's the power of it? In other words, what's the power to say what is the meaning or the effect on the heart and the mind when you say that word? So if a person says the word God, and you hear them say God, do you say, oh, that's lowercase God? Oh, that's uppercase God? You see what I'm saying? Though from a biblical perspective, yes, they put in lowercase g to show that it's not the true God, you understand, but it's the God of this world. But to those who have been blinded by the so-called God of this world, they don't see that difference. They see the God of this world as God, as the true and living God. And now the Bible tells us, the scriptures tells us, the epistle here of Hawaii of Aulos tells us that their minds have been blinded by this God. Now, we've often pointed out a, a kind of a likeness of this God, and you'll find this God of the world right here. Here's where you'll find, you see what it says? In God we trust, right? In God we trust, this, is the, this God of this world. This is some of the symbols of the God of this world. You understand? They worship this. They call this right here the almighty dollar, don't they? They call this the almighty dollar because this is, this is the talisman. This is the most powerful talisman of the God of this world. You see? And here we have it. This is the one dollar bill, which they also call the almighty, the almighty dollar. They don't even call God almighty nowadays. They call the dollar almighty, you know, and they say it so much, they repeat it over and over, that's part of the spell, until you recognize it, but then when you're put on the spot, such as in a teaching like this or other teachings, you'll say, I don't worship this. You know, a lot of folks will say, I, I, I don't worship this, so forth and so on. Think about it. You worship this more than you worship, you understand, the other God who you say you worship. You worship this more than the true God. Think about it. You understand? Think about how much time, how much thought, how much energy, how much, how much, how much begging and, and work and everything else they do for this. Because this is the talisman. We could say this is like the mark on a level of the God of this world. And it's very important that you look at, here it says on this, in God we trust, and it's right there with one. The one God. So if you say there's a one God, you understand? There's, there's one dollar bill. There's the one dollar bill, and the one dollar bill, as all of you should be quite familiar with, you see some of the most powerful um, talismans, some of those most powerful witchcraft is contained. You understand? It's contained on this particular dollar bill that, that all nations know this. Almost all people, I don't think there's, there's a people on the face of the earth that does not know what this is. You know, a lot of other things you might have to explain to them. This is one that you don't have to explain to almost any people. So it, it fulfills all of the qualifications, scripturally speaking. You understand? And even in another scripture where it says the love of money is the root of all evil. I mean, you even get to hear people expressing that, listen, friends will let you down, this will let you down, that will let you down, but the dollar, you know what I'm saying, but money won't let you down. Expressing that money is your friend, that money is your savior. Money can change your life because somebody got some money or gave somebody some money, that saved them. So, so if you don't get the connection, then perhaps it's like this for you, what the scripture says is true. And so what you can do, you understand, if you really want to come out of that, is, is, is to call on the Almighty, to seek Him, is, is, is to beseech Him, you understand, to even perhaps pray um, Psalm 51, you understand, if, if one really seek Him, one can come out of it, you understand, if one seeks the truth. Mm. So now, we want to give a background, as we mentioned already, we want to give a background to the Goma Oz the Bar thing. The first part we had touched on Goma. And so we let a, a, a day or, 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 or so go by. We were thinking on this and recorded something on um, the golden calf, hip hop and the golden calf. We want to 
touch on that a little bit more in a lecture like this to make the connection with the so-called um, Apophis or the Ibab. Now, that might throw a couple of folks so forth and so on, but it's very important that they understand there's that connection. They can go study it, verify it, check it out, accept it or reject it. Our job, our duty, our responsibility is to speak the word courageously and truthfully because there's a famine. There's a famine of truth. There's a, we heard one of these um, hip-hop artists try to defend the shoes and sneakers, right? And um, he said, listen, this is about having fun. I think it was Nelly or somebody. He said, if you want to learn something, go read a book. It's interesting he said that. But it's also interesting, even Obama said it when talking about the sneaker thing as a senator. He said that um, they're spending all this money on sneakers, you know, hundreds of dollars on sneakers from many very impoverished areas going to, out to rob and to kill for a certain, thinking that these sneakers, this material thing, you understand, changes one's spirit. If that is not idolatry and worship, then please explain what exactly is. If that's not a, 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 an object lesson, you see the sneaker craze and all these kind of craze that we see, especially afflicting and infecting the ghetto, you know what I'm saying, infecting black people, all people. And then even because it becomes popular with other, with other um, sheeple around the world, ones begin to think that it must be a god. And this is another connection with the God of this world. You see? Mm hmm The God of this world. So we touched on Gomer. You think? Gomer. Dealing with dealing with strength. There's Oz, right? Like the wizard of Oz, dealing with wisdom. And there's the bar, you understand? Dealing with beauty. You understand? But the bar actually deals with beauty, but in the sense as it's connected with the word. And we're going to touch on how the bar in the Hebrew. Now, we can look at all this. We look at this Hebraically. You see, we've gone through this Hebraically to get to the very roots. And we recognize that this is also Freemasonic language. This is Freemasonic language. You'd be surprised to know that a lot of your preachers, a lot of your pastors are Freemasons. You understand? And if they are not conscious, acknowledge Freemasons, their doctrine and their teaching and what they preach to you is all based and is squareable, is in the box of Freemasonry. So when they use this terminology, God, you think that it's speaking of the real, but it's speaking of the unreal. There's a Gnostic teaching that we want to touch on, too, where it talks about how the names of the real was given to the unreal in order to deceive people. So the Bible here exposes in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, it exposes the God of this world. And the world we know as a seclorum. So the God of this seclorum has done what? Has blinded the minds of those who don't, Revelation 3 and 14, don't have faithful and true admittance, that, that don't acknowledge the truth. Those who don't acknowledge the truth, their mind states, their mental states are blinded. So they cannot distinguish the God of this world from the true God. And therefore have fallen under the spell of the God spell. You see what I'm saying? Of the Freemasonic Gomer, Oz, and Debar. See, now they will tell you that there's only one God. Uh -huh. Well, for us who worship in spirit and in truth, there's only one God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. But the Bible tells you that there are gods and there are lords in the world, in the seclorum. And this is very clear to see. If you go and study different cultures, they have different gods. You understand? They have different lords. They have different so-called religions and theologies and so forth and so on. As many people as there are, you understand know different ethnicities and tribes and nations. There are that many different gods, if not more, and different lords. But the scripture tells us for us who are in the King of Kings and his Christ, there is one God and Father of our black Lord and Savior. So for us, there's one. There's one God and there's one Lord. You understand? Now, 
speaking of this God, many take even God to be the name. They say the name of God, and they say God, but they, they're not describing his name. And remember, this is, in, this is in dyslexic. This is against the law. This is against the Torah, you see? So we study Torah, we learn of the true God, you see? We learn of the true God of Moses, the true God of Abraham, the true God of Yishak, the true God of Yaakov. God the triune, the true God, you understand, who is the trinity, who is the triune. Now, this may confuse people because people say, well, there's a lot of different religions out there who also talk about a trinity. There is a holy trinity, the true trinity, and there are unholy trinities. There's a Jewish or Judaic trinity, and the Judaic trinity is the true trinity. You understand? Now, we need to probably go into this in a little more detail, but let's point out a couple of verses first, first and foremost. Because this is, with with the God has been so-called misinterpreted, misunderstood for far too long, and unless one gets past that faulty programming, you understand? Unless one gets past that faulty programming, they will remain blinded, as Second Corinthians four and four already informed us of. Now, when we look at right here, we look at this apostasy. There's seven stages of apostasy. When we go to um, Romans, and this is very interesting, we go to Romans, right? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Now, Romans chapter 1, we can begin from verse, uh, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let's begin from verse uh, 16 of Romans chapter 1. Paolo says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I and I am not ashamed of the gospel of the King of Kings and his Christ. I and I am not ashamed of the true gospel of Christ. You understand? But first of all, you have to recognize who is the true Christ. You If you cannot recognize the fact that Christ, according to the Bible, according to um, history, according to that region of the world, is an Ethiopian, is a woolly head, Ethiopian, is a black man, then you do not recognize, if you cannot recognize even the physical things, then how can you recognize the spiritual things? If one's are dishonest with that reality and fact, or are so racist, you know what I'm saying, or are so self-hating that they cannot recognize that Christ is black, what we call black, a black man, an Ethiopian, then everything else that they think they know will only serve to confuse them. You see, that's the, that's the first beginning point with the, with the basic things like the Bible teaches. If you can't recognize the creation and that there must have been a creator of this creation, you understand, then and if you can't recognize his, his physical signs, then how can you recognize his supernatural signs? Christ even says the same thing. You understand, he says the same thing to them concerning that um, if you do not, if you cannot receive the earthly examples, the earthly manifestation, the earthly things, and teaching them the earthly things, how can you receive the spiritual, the heavenly things? You understand, if you cannot recognize the things that you can see or the things that are before you, how can you recognize the things that are hidden from you? So in other words, if you don't recognize what's in your face, and how can you recognize what's hidden from you? So here, Hawadi of Alos, he says that, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christos, for it is the power of God, the power of the true Elohim, to salvation to everyone that believeth, or everyone who mameneth, everyone who admits as true, everyone who has amen, to the Jew, or to the Ihud, the Ihud first, and also to the Greek. This is like to say to the black first, and then to the white. To the black races, and to the south, and then to the north. You know, below the Mediterranean, above the Mediterranean. For therein is the righteousness of God. For in that is the righteousness of God revealed from faith, Notice it's from faith to faith. They could have said from belief to belief. But when you go and look at the words, the, 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 the Hebraic and the Greek, you find that the very same word they translate for faith is the very same word for belief. 
but they choose two different words in English because that's part of the that's part of the programming. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The word just is the same as righteous. So when you hear the word just, you understand, shemitically, you understand, according to the, the the language of God in Christ, it's one and the same word. But in the English they you know they 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 put a little um trick, a little deception in there. So people would think that just is better than righteous, righteous is better than just, while they're both one and the same in the root scriptural biblical languages. Now, here the first part speaks on the guilty world. We're in a world that's guilty. You understand this is why everyone fears judgment and is thinking about, you know, these times of destruction. You understand? And 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 is and, and is feigning out of fear of what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen in twenty twelve, what's gonna happen on, on, on what is it, December December twenty first or whatever like that, what's gonna happen around this time. They are afraid because they know that they're guilty. See, this is the interesting thing. They would not be so afraid if they were innocent, but there's a knowledge, even unconsciously, of the guilt of this of this seclorum. So when we talk about world, make sure you recognize it as a seclorum, the same seclorum that's written on that dollar bill, the same world system that we live in presently. So the gospel is a revelation of wrath also. See, what most folks think that the gospel is, is just good news. The true gospel is just good news. It's good news to the righteous, but it's woe to the wicked. You see? So the gospel is a revelation of wrath also. It says, verse 18, for the wrath of, of Jah, the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven. From heaven. This is why everyone's looking at these signs in the heavens. This is why they have all these um, satellites and all these observatories all over the world among the Gentiles looking at every little sign in heaven. Why are they looking at these signs? The Bible tells us. Because the wrath of Jah, the wrath of Elohim, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, of men and people, of humanity, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, who hold the truth, who regard the truth of the King of Kings, the truth of Haile Selassie I, as an unrighteous thing. There's a wrath of Jah, there's a wrath of God, you understand, that is revealed, and we're in that process of the revelation, even right now. Even right now in 2012, as it leads up to that day, but more importantly, to the year, to the year, you understand, so 2013, think about it. The universe is a revelation of the power and the true divinity, or we can say deity, of the true God, of Jah. Because, verse 19, that which may be known of God, that which may be known of Elohim, is manifest to them, for Elohim sheweth it, to them. Elohim shows it to them. You understand? In his wonders in the heavens, in his wonders on earth, you understand? In his wonders in the sea, in his wonders among humanity, he shows it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. They're clearly visible. Being understood by the things that are made, being understood by those things that have been created, those things that have been made, even his eternal power, his eternal hail, you understand, his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the things of the true God can be seen by the creation, you see, but most people are, 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 are in Babylon, are in man-made creation. You understand? And don't even spend time looking at the heavens, really, unless it's a storm or something like that. You know, don't spend time studying the Almighty's creation. You understand? The, the, the true creation. Because they don't even spend time remembering the Sabbath. You see, to remember the Sabbath, this is what we talk about, the Sabbath, and keeping the Sabbath is that first step. You understand? Keeping the Sabbath, the Sendet, is that first step. Because it's to remember the Sabbath, to keep it holy, to keep it yet to get the set according to the royal and heart, to keep it set apart, to see, keep it set apart from everything else as a time of reflection. When we look at that command, the, the Sabbath word, what does the Sabbath word speak about? The Sabbath word speak about the one who created the heavens. 
You understand? The one who created the earth, the one who created creation. You understand? Who rested from his work of, of the creation. So we reflect on that. We remember that day and we, rem and we reflect on the one who created the creation. Why? Because that is the key, my brothers and sisters. That, that's very important right there. You understand? This is why so-called nature, when Rastafari, when Rastafari talk about the nature, you understand? No, natural. You understand? It's speaking towards the creation, recognizing and remembering the creation. You understand? Because when you recognize the creation, you recognize the need for a blameless creator. And then you recognize that that which is destroying creation, you understand, is the devil, is Satan, and is the men and the people who have been deceived, these who are polluting the creation, these who are still persecuting and destroying the animal life, making creatures of the Almighty extinct. You understand? You start to recognize that there is the God of this world that's about that, and the true and living God who created all of this, who is about I and I. Right? Now, there are seven stages of the Gentile world apostasy. Now, it's interesting that when we talk about the Gentiles and we talk about Gomer, you understand, right here. Gomer, you understand, we can say the G is for the Gentiles. Everybody want to be a G, right? They want to be a God or a Gentile God. You know this? Because the apostasy broke out with the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? Here's how we know it. Scripturally and even historically we can see this. And when we say Gentiles, generally speaking, we are saying the non-black races. You understand? When we go into ancient history and ancient creation. But this very same virus, you understand, came among the black peoples themselves too. You understand? This fall, the fall of man touched all. You understand? The fall of man touched all. Because that, verse 21, when they knew God, when they had a knowledge of God, right, they glorified him not as God. When they knew that he was God, they didn't glorify him. This is like when they knew that Haile Selassie I is king of kings. You understand? They didn't glorify him. They didn't recognize that. The world didn't. Some black folks did. Later on, black folks also apostated themselves too. Overstand this. So we can see even the manifestations of this even in our time, because this is not a reality just that it happened then, but this is an ongoing manifestation. You understand? So these are the things that should be clearly seen and clearly understood. Neither were thankful. They wasn't thankful. Even when you hear some, even Ethiopians, careless Ethiopians speak of Haile Selassie the first, then you study what His Majesty really did for that country and that people. You understand? You would think they would be more thankful. You know what I'm saying? You would think they would be more grateful. But it says, but ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. But and the sword of God is the word of God. But they became vain in their imaginations. So what they were thinking, what they were doing, this is what we see with the entertainment industry and the music industry and, and these videos. You know, they are vain in their imaginations. All these things they're thinking about just vanity. And their foolish heart was darkened. You understand? Their foolish heart was darkened. It's amazing. Could we have to just talk about this right here again? Right? Talk about this right here again. This, this Kanye West. Right? People say, oh, he's trying to be Christ. But now he's talking about that he's God, that he deserves to be in the Bible. Oh, yeah, you are in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? You're like that thief that was crucified, too that didn't glorify the King of Kings and His Christ, that didn't glorify our black Lord and Savior. You understand? And even said, well, F Christ. You understand? Well, F the Messiah. You know, right? You have to understand the deepness of this, brothers and sisters. The, their foolish heart was darkened. It says the fool says in his heart that there is no God. You understand? Then that same fool will turn around and say, well, I'm God. You know, and this is what you start to hear. And he says, is this madness? The, the word that some um, commentators on the YouTubes have described it as like insanity. It's insanity because they're dealing with the unreality. They're not dealing with the reality. You understand? Now, it says, professing themselves to be wise. They profess themselves to have some wisdom. Now, notice 
the next thing that's coming up right here. We have the G. Now we have the O, Oz. Oz equals what? Wisdom. Oz equals wisdom. But Oz is connected with another place. I want to give you this right here. Oz, we could say Oz, or we could say Uz. Remember Uz? Abraham dwelt in Uz. You understand? There's a place called Uz. We'll touch on it. And Job also was a man of Uz. You understand? A man of what? Wisdom. He came from a place named Uz. But Oz, as the wizard of Oz, refers to wisdom. What does the scripture say right here? The scripture says in verse 22, Romans chapter 1, verse 2-2, it says, professing themselves. So we have all these ones that profess this, profess that. They profess themselves to be wise, you understand, to have wisdom. They became fools. They became foolish. Now remember the connection, their foolish heart was darkened. The fool says in his heart that there is no God. That means they deny the true and the living God. And changed, now here's the key, they changed the glory of the incorruptible God of the incorruptible God that created all of this, you know what I'm saying, and all of I and I, into an image made like to corruptible man. Now notice what it says. It didn't say that he changed the image of the incorruptible God into the image of the incorruptible man. No. It says that they changed the image of, of, of the uncorruptible, the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. We see this very clearly, you understand, well, Paul is speaking of the times before, you understand, and the other nations, and even when we look at ancient Egypt, you understand, they understood the incorruptible, the uncorruptible God, you understand, but even over time, that image was changed into, like, corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. This is why we look at now, Previous to this time right here that we're speaking, and we're speaking roughly, probably a little earlier than that, but some would say this book was dated, uh, how did they date this book? This book of Romans, roughly 60 A.D. So let's say this is before Jerusalem, the destruction of Jerusalem, and, and the real scattering of us as the lost black sheep, you understand, and other books that really show who we are around the time. This is leading up to so by our history from Babylon to Timbuktu, you know, and these are books that our black people need to read, you know, spend some money on getting some books, you know, and reading some books instead of just with the sneakers and the vanities. Even your president told you that when he was a senator, you know, even Nelly made a joke of it. He said, listen, just having fun. If you want to learn something, then, you know, go read a book. Well, brothers and sisters, I hope you're inspired to read a book. This book first, this book first right here, and this book is really speaking about where we're at right now. You understand? We're, we're in the time of the Valley of Skull and Bones, the Valley of Dry Bones. At this, at this almost end game, we're coming to the end game, brothers and sisters. You understand? The end of this so-called Gentile world, seclorum, Gentile world system. But many careless Ethiopians are going to go down when Babylon go down. Because John Word already said it. You understand? Know John Word already said, you know, these, these, these careless, you know, the careless Ethiopians, you understand? Know and the lost sheep. Those lost sheep who are Israel, yes, they are of us, but they are not of us because they have gone out from us and they've sold their souls. You understand? Know they've sold their souls to the devil. They sold their souls for so called fame and fortune and for the worldly things, for the golden calf. They worship that metaphorical golden calf in this present day and time. And this is the reality. So it's, it, it shows right here in the scripture how they changed the glory of God from the true uncorruptible to the corruptible, right? Verse 24, now the result of this Gentile world apostasy, this Gentile world falling away, it says, wherefore God or Jah gave them up. And are we as black people, when you see this present state of black folks, are we at a state where it seems like Jah has given up or is giving up on, on a large majority of this people, when you see what's really going on among black folks? Have we received the warnings, the warners, 
You understand? The teachers, have they been sent? Has the message been made almost abundantly clear? And now we're coming into judgment mode, to judgment time. Here it says, wherefore God gave, gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie. Look at that. They changed what? The truth into a lie. So they stopped worshiping the true God or the God of truth and start wor wor worshiping the God of this world, the liar, Diablos, the devil. And we see all these signs, you know what I'm saying, within the present so-called hip-hop and the present so-called black and world culture. You understand? Know we, we see this. This is clear. They worship and they worship and serve the what? The creature. That's why they worship the Baphomet. You understand? Know that, that's a creature. You understand? Know that, 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 that's some, some hybrid type of abomination, abominable creature, but they worship and serve the creature. You understand? Know more than the creator. You see, they worship and serve the creature. And to the key is they say more than, because they would say they worship God. They say they worship the Creator, but the Scripture says that they worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. So they still try to worship God in their so-called way. But the Creator is blessed forever. Amen. Baruch, Baruch, Ata Adonai. For this cause, Jah gave them up to vile affections. Now, this is interesting, that when you see what's going on, in black culture among black people, 2012, in this present time, when you see how far ones have fallen off and this, and this, this, this insanity, it's interesting that the word would actually tell us that John would give them up to what vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against, against nature.